Karen McCann is putting her daughter Megan to bed, throwing out a moth that is scaring Megan, unaware that some creepo is stalking the house from the bushes. Karen lives with her husband Mac and eldest daughter Julie, all excited to celebrate Megan's birthday party later in the afternoon. Mac leaves the house and Karen rushes off to her job at a local news station. After a long day at work, she is heading back home but gets stuck in bumper-to-bumper traffic. Fearing that she may be late, she calls home and is surprised to hear Julie answer the phone, having skipped her soccer practice to help decorate for the party. Mother and daughter are excited about the decorations they have so far when someone rings the doorbell. Julie answers but is suddenly attacked and thrown to the ground. While Karen screams for her daughter and listens helplessly, a large male begins to take advantage of her. Karen tries and fails to get someone in traffic to call 911, not wanting to hang up, until a woman agrees to help her. With the phone stuck to her ear and screaming for Julie to hang on, Karen races on foot trying to get to her daughter. Julie fights but fails to avoid the assault. And in a brutal act, the man smashes an ice sculpture over her head killing her. Karen hears the man pick up the phone, but he hangs up and flees. Karen is able to get a cab, and is greeted by cops who stop her from witnessing the gruesome sight. Karen and Max speak with Detective Joe Danilo who ignores the couple's tears and only tries to get details about the circumstances. Mac gets fed up with him tormenting his wife and leaves in anger, telling them to catch the culprit. Karen and Mac head over to their friend Dolly's house where Megan is asleep. The family spends the night there but in the morning, Megan is curious as to why they did not go home and why Julie isn't with them. Mac tries his best to explain how bad things happen to people but he is saved by Dolly who interrupts offering breakfast. At the funeral, Karen has to tolerate everyone asking her how she is doing but finally manages to escape to the kitchen to get a smoke. She is unable to sleep that night and spends the time in Julie's room, trying to come to terms with the loss of her daughter. A few days later, Karen, Mac and Megan go for a walk, but Megan insists on running ahead of her parents. Now paranoid after the attack, Karen starts to think that anyone around her could be the attacker, causing her to panic and chase after Megan and grab her angrily. She manages to calm down, trying to explain herself to Mac who tries to understand and reassure her that she is safe. The next day Karen visits the police station where she learns from Detective Danilo that they have good news. They have retrieved DNA samples from the crime scene and suspect one of the few delivery drivers that frequent the area. Based on this, Danilo is confident that they will catch the attacker. He also introduces Karen to a support group hoping that it will help her cope. Mac accompanies Karen to a group meeting where she hears the stories of other parents who have lost close family members to gun violence and never got the justice they deserved. The parents are divided, with some calling for forgiveness, while others call for vengeance. That night, Megan is having an ice cream when she accidentally messes up one of Julie's pillows, but hides it before her mom can find out. The next morning, Megan secretly calls her dad's attention to the mistake. Dad thinks it's an easy fix, but Megan is certain that Karen is going to be mad at her. Later father and daughter are having breakfast when there is a commotion. Karen has found the pillow and blames Megan for washing it. Mac owns up, but Karen is still angry that the smell of her daughter is gone, but Mac explains and calms her down. Karen then gets a call from Danilo saying that they arrested the suspect to the crime, a Robert Dube, based on the DNA samples, and is certain that he will be put away. Karen and Max sees Doob on the news and becomes obsessed with watching the video of her daughter's killer. It is the day of the trial and Karen and Mac learn that their attorney has been replaced which raises a red flag. Doob is walked into the courtroom nonchalantly under the hateful stare of Karen and to her surprise, the judge allows his handcuffs to be removed. Karen and Mac look on. As Doob's defense raises a motion to have the case dismissed, due to the fact that they did not receive samples of the DNA for testing. After a few back and forths between the lawyers, the judge calls them to his desk. Dube turns and stares at a shocked Karen as the judge rules in favor of the defense, and drops all charges against Dube. He then mocks Karen to her face but Mac tackles him to the ground forcing the cops to drag him off as Dube walks away laughing. The next day Mac is at work when he gets a call that Karen did not turn up for work. Fearing the worst he rushes home only to find Karen curled up in bed, not having the energy to get anything done. Karen gets the arrest records for Robert released to her but the clerk uses whiteout to cover the address. Karen however manages to reveal Dube's address which leads her into a rough side of town. She posts up in a cafe across the street and spots him walking out of his building and begins to follow him. She sees him throw hot coffee on a stray dog before heading into an alley. The next day at work, Karen tells Dolly about her following Dube and watching his movements. But Dolly gets worried, urging her to stop before she gets hurt. Karen however continues to follow Dube seeing him heading off to his delivery job in an old rickety truck. She sees him drop off a few packages then he stops by the home of a young Spanish woman. Dube shows interest in the woman, staring at her through her window as he leaves. He stops to take a pee when he spots Karen sitting in her car, 
causing her to speed off. She immediately rushes over to the police station telling them to arrest Dupe, but Danilo warns her to stop following him and tells her to leave. The next day Karen goes back to the home of the Spanish woman trying to warn her about Dupe, but the woman does not understand English. The woman's husband returns home and instead of hearing Karen out, he rushes her out of his home. Danilo heads over to Dube's workplace roughing him up and warning him to stay away from women's windows. At the parents' support group, Karen hears that one of the parents got retribution when their son's killer was shot and killed. This thought lingers on Karen's mind as she rewatches the tape of Dube's arrest. The following day Megan is at her school's playground when Dube shows up being friendly with Megan who innocently invites him to play. The teacher calls in the other kids after recess, not realizing that Megan has not returned. Later, Karen picks up Megan from school and is returning to her car when Dube appears in front of her. He grimly warns her to stop following him and threatens to hurt Megan before walking away leaving Karen speechless. At the parent support meeting, Karen meets Sydney, the mourning father whose son's killer was taken out. Going off rumors, Karen begs him for help with her case. Seeing her desperation, Sydney tells her to meet him at a garage at a remote location. Meanwhile, another member angel watches them intently. Karen turns up at the garage that night, where she meets Sydney and another man Martin. Karen finally admits that she is unable to get over what Dube did to her family. Sydney and Martin admit that they plan the revenge hit and decide to help Karen get training in a gun, under the condition that she pulls the trigger herself. Karen agrees to the deal and begins combat and gun training right away. She also begins planning with Sydney and Martin on how she will carry out her hit. After another meeting, Karen is heading to the parking lot to grab her car when she feels like she is being followed. Karen lay waits and attacks the man who turns out to be an innocent businessman and is forced to apologize, but somehow feels good about herself. This boost in confidence increases her hormone drive and she starts giving the cheeks back to Mac. That night Megan has a bad dream and calls for Mac but Karen goes instead. Megan refuses to tell her dream to Karen but asks if she is still mad at her for losing Julie since it was her birthday. Karen hugs Megan and apologizes, deciding to spend the night with her daughter. We then see Sydney and Martin discussing whether they can trust Karen or not. Sydney leaves, unaware that an FBI van is parked right across the street taping their conversations. He goes to meet with Karen and hands her a gun telling her she can still back out but Karen is insistent. At another meeting, Karen and Angel are having a drink when Angel suddenly tells her not to do it. She warns Karen that she will get caught but Karen denies knowing anything. Karen returns home where Mac confronts her for lying about where she had lunch. He reveals that he knows about her going to the shooting range and wonders why she hid all that information from him. He asks if she bought a gun, to which Karen says no and is technically right. Karen goes by Angel's house where Angel reveals that she is an FBI agent investigating vigilantism within the support group. She warns Karen to stop what she is doing and think of Megan's future. Knowing this Karen contacts Sydney, telling him that she is backing out of the plan. The next day we see Dube arrive at the Spanish woman's home, but as she goes to get a tip for him, Dube steps into the home and takes a seat. The woman nervously hands him the tip, but Dube suddenly grabs her and begins attacking her. Karen gets a call from Danilo and learns that they have arrested Dube as a suspect. She thinks that he will be charged but learns that they still lack evidence and will be forced to release him, causing Karen to erupt into a rage. She returns to her office after hours and removes boxes of documents from the office. Karen and Mac had planned to take a trip to clear their heads, but Karen gets a call from Dolly about the missing boxes. Karen acts ignorant and uses it as an excuse to stay behind while Mac and Megan leave. She then begins to stalk Dube on his delivery route. She manages to steal a key to his apartment while he is out and gets access to his room. Karen begins searching around until she finds a clay cookie that belongs to Megan. Unbeknownst to her, Dube is on his way back to his apartment. He gets there to find his door open and steps inside to see his room turned upside down. He then sees Karen's hat that she left behind and instantly knows she was there. Dube, wearing Karen's hat, returns to her home later that night and breaks in while she is upstairs taking a shower. He makes his way to the bathroom but finds himself held at gunpoint by Karen. Karen reminds him about Julie but Dube suddenly attacks and disarms her. The two begin to struggle and Karen ends up falling down the stairs. Dube steps towards her, but Karen manages to grab the gun and begins to riddle Dube with bullets until he falls over dead. The cops soon arrive on the scene with Karen sitting in shock. Danilo tells Karen that he knows what she has done, but Karen simply tells him to prove it. Danilo then reports to his other detective that it was a clear case of self-defense. Mac and Julie had returned to the home after suspecting what Karen was up to. Mac sits beside her holding her hand, knowing what she has done but choosing to just sit with her. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications, so you can watch more movies like this. Thanks for watching.